Mr Speaker, Nathan Guy. my question to the Prime Minister reads, what step has the government recently taken to help ease the sharpest impacts of the current recession and prepare New Zealand's economy for future growth? Very tiny. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the government has taken a number of steps, including introducing legislation which will ensure there will be tax reductions from 1 April this year that will provide much stimulus and support to those in great need. We have introduced the restart package to ensure we are providing extra support to those hard hit by redundancy. We have announced the first phase of the government's reforms to simplify and streamline the Resource Management Act. We announced last week a, a group of initiatives for the Small Business Relief Package, which will help lighten the load on small and medium enterprises. And, Mr. Speaker, we have only just begun. Supplementary. Nathan Guy. Supplementary to the Prime Minister. Is the government planning to announce any further measures in the near future? Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, yes. Tomorrow I'll be announcing the government's plans to bring forward a number of infrastructure projects and to start a number of brand new ones. They are in the areas of state highways, school property, state housing projects. These are projects that will be ready to be start and underway ASAP. In addition to that, on the 27th of February I'll be hosting the Jobs Summit that will bring together the private sector, local government, NGOs and public sector participants to discuss how we can ensure that people are kept in employment. These are simply some of the announcements we are making in February, Mr Speaker. But of course, there is always more that we may announce soon. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> Mr. Order. Mr Speaker. Order. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, can the Prime Minister confirm that by far the largest part of the so-called stimulus package was actually in Labor's 2008 budget, uh, where tax cuts totalling nearly $11 billion were legislated for? Can he confirm that the bulk of his tax bill being introduced is actually already in Labor's 2008 tax bill? And can he confirm that most of the projects, if not all of the projects that he will announce tomorrow, have already received approval, are in the pipeline and are ready to go as a result of the last government's actions? The Honourable Prime Minister may answer one of those questions. Mr. Speaker, no. What I can confirm is this government has taken about 100 or so days to start cutting taxes, and his government took nine years to cut taxes. What I can confirm is that our small to medium enterprise package, which included some of the initiatives that the government had considered, was actually seven times larger than the initiatives proposed by his government. What I can confirm is that in the 2009-2010 period, where his government had nothing to do with tax cuts, that in fact our stimulus is negative 4.4 per cent relative to 2.9 per cent negative in terms of cash deficits. Mr Speaker, the uh, New Zealand public are rightfully so looking towards our government to ensure they get through this economic recession. Nathan Guy. Supplementary to the Prime Minister. Has the Prime Minister seen any reports about the level of fiscal stimulus in New Zealand compared to other OECD countries? You, Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, yes, I've seen a report showing that the fiscal stimulus across the period 2007 to 2010 in all OECD countries. That shows New Zealand having the third highest fiscal stimulus in the OECD. This level of fiscal stimulus is, a, is an appropriate response to the circumstances facing New Zealand. However, I would warn members who are calling for more that overdoing that stimulus, however, would mean running very large deficits and building up levels of government debt, which would be a huge burden not just on this generation but on future generations. And maybe Mr Goff could give that some consideration. Uh, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Can the Prime Minister confirm that three quarters of that stimulus package that he's now bragging about was as a result of Labor government actions? Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, what I can confirm... Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker... Well... Mr Speaker... You have to tell the truth. 
Mr Speaker, this is what I can confirm, that it took nine years and an impending electoral defeat for the member to be in a government that finally decided to cut taxes. And the only reason they didn't cut taxes wasn't because they couldn't afford to do so, but the then Minister of Finance, Dr Michael Cullen, had absolutely no interest in cutting taxes, and that's why New Zealanders had to wait nine years and for a change of government to have any confidence that their taxes are coming down. Point of order, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, that was a very straightforward question. It required a yes or a no answer, and I was unable to tell from the burble from the Prime Minister whether it was a yes or a no. Order, order. I listened very carefully to the answer from the Prime Minister, and I believe he did address the question and that he did refer to measures uh, with respect to fiscal stimulus by the previous government. Uh, the, uh, the Honourable Jim Anderton. Mr Speaker, as the Prime Minister in his answer, quoting OECD figures, mentioned the years 2007-2008 for fiscal stimulus, could he confirm that the National Party was not in government in those years? And secondly, if the aim of the business tax policy package was to help ease the effects of recession and prepare for growth, why didn't the package mention in any way, shape or form the words agriculture or primary industry, which earn 65 per cent of our overseas exchange earnings? And why didn't the word exports come into that package or any statement the government's made since it was elected? The Honourable Prime Minister, and again, may answer one of those questions. Mr Speaker, I can confirm that uh, the National Party was not in government in the 2007-2008 period, except at the end of 2008. But I am surprised that the member, who used to be the Minister of Agriculture, doesn't realise that so many farms up and down the country are small to medium enterprises, as are exporters. No wonder the agricultural sector was so pleased to see the back of them. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Has the, Prime Minister, has the Prime Minister seen the proposal from United Nations Secretary-General Ban Ki-moon for a Green New Deal, uh, which would address both the global economic crisis and the global climate crisis at the same time, and which elements of the Green New Deal will be incorporated in his economic package when it's released? Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I have, and the member will be pleased to see uh, when we announce some of the projects that they will be addressing issues not only of energy efficiency, uh, but of insulation and of climate change. And I think he'll be pleased when he sees the final package. Dr. Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, has the, will his government be following in the steps of US President Barack Obama? Um, who's not only addressing kind of elements of a Green New Deal, but is also talking about creating, creating five million green collar jobs, so innovative jobs in green collar industries. These are new jobs and innovative jobs that will actually save the climate and produce good economic results. Has he been follow will he be following in the steps of Barack Obama, and what elements of his economic package will be along the lines of creating green collar jobs? Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I've learnt, long since learned it's dangerous territory to start likening oneself to Barack Obama. Uh, <coughs> but uh, I can assure the member that we will be creating jobs in our economy and they will be jobs that uh, not only have a consideration for economic growth and providing good wages for those who are in them, but there will also be jobs that have an eye to ensuring that environmental responsibility is taken seriously by our government. Mr Speaker. Nathan Guy. Is the Prime Minister concerned about building up excessive levels of government debt? Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, yes, I am very concerned about New Zealand's future debt levels. In the short term, the prospect of excessive levels of government debt could well bring about a downgrade from credit agencies. Members will be aware that the Standard & Poor's recently gave New Zealand a negative outlook. A downgrade would lead to New Zealanders paying higher interest rates and risks lower growth rates into the future. And I would remind the Leader of the Opposition that if he wants to make promises about doing more and spending more, that can only come from debt, given our current cash deficit, and maybe he should show some restraint. Question, no. 
Point of order, the Honourable Jim Anderson. I seek leave to table the award given to me by the Federated Farmers. <laughs> for, for being the only leader in the last election to emphasise the importance leave, of the role of agriculture. Leave has been sought. Order. Leave has been sought to table an award. I remind the honourable member it must be tabled before the end of the day. Is there any objection to that course of action? There is no objection. We come now.